Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and get started then, <laughs> so that not too many groans will happen while I'm trying to stall for time. Uh, so I will just say thank you all again for coming. Um, I'm going to hand it. Um, my name is Maury Hensley. Um, I'm the Director of Planning, Education, and Restoration for the Santa Fe Watershed Association. And I'm so thrilled to share with you the, the launch of our new Santa Fe community network this evening. And I'm going to turn it over to our Executive Director, Andy Otto. Yikes. Thank you, Maury. Uh, as Maury mentioned, I'm Andy Otto, Executive Director of the Santa Fe Watershed Association, and, and I just would love to thank you all for being here. It's such a, an incredible um, honor for us, and this is an exciting new program. I'm kind of excited about it, and so it's, it's pretty cool. So we would like to begin this meeting by acknowledging that the Santa Fe River Watershed is within the homelands of Tiwa and Karis speaking Pueblos and the Hikaria Apache. Our office is located in Ogapooge, the Tiwa name for Santa Fe, roughly translated to White Shell Water Place. We recognize that the relationship between water, land, and people in this place is ancient, layered, and complex. We strive to help correct any past harms to indigenous and Asakia communities as fellow stewards of this beloved watershed. Thank you all again for being here. I'm gonna now introduce our the president of the board of the Santa Fe Watershed Association, Mr. Steve Hamp. Hello. Uh, I am Stephen Hamp and I'm a president of the Board of Directors for the Santa Fe Watershed Association. And I'm very happy to be here this afternoon. I too am excited today to welcome you to the official launch of our community network. Planting trees to expand the urban tree canopy throughout the Santa Fe River watershed is valuable work. Our network includes support for the city's Tree Smart Santa Fe program, and more importantly, coordination with many other partners in this effort to enhance our community. So I'd like to thank everyone today for joining our webinar. It's great to see your interest on this subject, and I'm sure you will enjoy the presentation. Uh, I'd also like to thank Maury for putting all of this together uh, so we can uh, kick this launch off with a bang. So now I'll turn it back to Maury and she will introduce our speaker. Thanks. Thank you so much, Stephen and Andy for those words of welcome and for all your support and all you do for the Watershed Association. Um, before I... Uh, hand it back over to Andy to introduce our, our speaker tonight. Um, I wanted to give a brief overview of, um, of the community network and, and just kind of where it started and how uh, it's progressing. Can you all see my screen? Um, great, so hopefully this will be quick and I won't be too long-winded here. <laughs> Um, basically, the, the Santa Fe Community Network, although the, the launch has kind of come together here at the last minute, um, it's really been um, an effort that's been underway, thanks to Andy and folks from the city and the county and lots of other people for, for many years now. And, and really, the enthusiasm that Santa Feans have for planting trees is kind of coming to a head, and, and we're seeing the value of trees more than ever. And, and, and so... I feel really lucky to be a part of this program at, at this point in time. And, and the, the primary goal for this new program is to sustain and hopefully expand ecologically appropriate vegetative cover and tree canopy throughout the Santa Fe River watershed. Um, but primarily focusing in kind of Metro Santa Fe since that is where a lot of the kind of most urgent and rapid land conversion is happening. And of course, that's where most of the people in our watershed live. 
Um, so of course, these are some benefits of trees that we are hoping <laughs> can benefit our own watershed and the plantings that we do. Uh, protecting groundwater, um, reducing urban heat island impacts, providing wildlife habitat and corridors throughout the watershed, providing green space and aesthetics, sequestering carbon, mitigating air and water pollution, and even sound pollution, and, and also giving our, our landscape and our watershed, watershed some resilience um, in the face of climate change, which we're all experiencing right now. Um, so I, I kind of, in addition to using, uh, using this program to plant trees, I'm also going to use a tree as a metaphor for how we're sort of seeing the way that our program is going to operate um, within sort of this ecosystem of other fantastic groups doing great work, both government, non-government, private individuals. So um, as you can see here, volunteers and contractors, we really see as the leaves of, of this program. Um, they are kind of the crown, they're the most visible part of the program and um, they, they literally bring the energy <laughs> into the program. And so that's why uh, leaves symbolize volunteers and, and contractors that we work with. And then the branches symbolize our, our different programs. So the Santa Fe Community Network will not just be about one program or, or other, you know, we'll be working on rain gardens and on public property and private property and people's yards and parking lots, doing education and outreach, doing monitoring, um, and, and not only kind of spearheading our own projects, but also supporting hopefully the projects that other folks are doing in, in various capacities. Um, and so that kind of brings us to the roots. <laughs> the roots sort of mirror the, the crown of the tree in many ways and provide other types of resources. Um, and, and so the root network again will be um, more uh, other kinds of resources, not only funding, obviously funding is a very important <laughs> part of that, but all kinds of sort of back, uh, background work that happens that might not be as visible to people um, looking at the program on its face, but uh, resources that play an integral role to sort of make the, the program function. And so whether that's funding or expertise or even just connections to other um, organizations or project and, and even just enthusiasm within our community at large, you know, even if you don't have the time or the money to get involved in this particular program, just maybe knowing that it exists can help people get excited about trees and, and help spread the word and things like that. And so that's also something that's really important to us as an organization, not just for this program, but also for all of the programs that we do. And of course, to <laughs> extend the, the metaphor of roots, of course, trees and uh, tree roots live in networks and operate in networks. And of course, we're learning about all of the ways that, that roots not only send resources up to the leaves and the other parts of the tree, but, but roots are a system. They create a network within the soil um, with other with other trees of the same species and even with different species. And so um, this is kind of a, a metaphor of how we really, it's really important for us to be able to create and support and facilitate a network of all kinds of tree and vegetation planting that we can facilitate in our watershed because we all know that this is a huge undertaking none of us can plant enough trees or enough shrubs or enough grass seed um, to cover the whole watershed or to take care of our soil and our water and our landscape the, the way that um, is gonna make an impact. But if we all kind of work together and support each other and communicate and collaborate, then we have the best chance possible to, um, to have that significant impact. So that's really where the network piece of this comes in that we, the, it's central to what we're trying to do with this program is, is to have a network, to have partnerships 
where uh, you know sometimes we'll be leading a project or maybe another time someone else will be leading a project but whether that is supporting through just sharing a post on social media or whether it is um, providing funding or sharing opportunities with our volunteers there are so many ways that we can work together to, to plant ecologically appropriate vegetation that, that is going to um, align with our organization's mission, which is to work towards the health and vibrancy of the Santa Fe River watershed. Um, and finally, we have the trunk, right? And the, the trunk is, is really important because it connects the crown of the tree and the root network. And so that's really where the, the Santa Fe Watershed Association comes in and how we see our, our place is that we kind of share the resources between the root network up into our programs and our volunteers and our contractors and also the other way around. And so that way, you know, it, we create kind of a functioning and sustaining living system. Um, so so the, the staff and, and even the, the board of Santa Fe Watershed Association are kind of the the trunk of this of this tree network. <laughs> so, um, oh, um, finally, uh, just to reiterate again, the foundation of this program, um, even though it's called Community Tree, it's <laughs> it is community. Um, it's a community effort that is centered around trees, but also in relation to trees. You know, um, the goal of all of the programs that we do at the Watershed Association center around increasing that sense of relationship and stewardship and responsibility between people and land and water um, and, and between each other. So um, community and partnership are, are essential for, for this program and all of our others and, and also equity as well, you know, making sure that we are really listening to all parts of our community and making sure that uh, we are prioritizing underserved areas that have, um, that kind of suffer the greatest impacts of pollution and urban heat island effect and, and a wide range of other, other things. But at the end of the day, everyone needs clean water. Everyone deserves to have green space and, and wildlife habitat nearby um, and, and a sense of connection to our watershed. And so this is just the latest iteration of um, a program that, that we are hoping can contribute to those goals within our watershed. And um, I'll just share kind of our, our current <laughs> ecosystem of partners that we are so blessed to have worked with in the past on tree planting programs. Um, this list isn't totally exhaustive, but um, this, is, this is hopefully just a start and we will look forward to increasing the relationships and, and deepening our conversations in the months and years ahead. So um, if you have more questions, if you want to learn more about specific programs that we have been working on, um, I would encourage you to go to our website. Um, we also just released a series of short kind of promotional videos about some projects we've work, been working on. So you can find those on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and we look forward to, to doing more to come. So thank you again for coming and I'll turn it back over to Andy. Thank you, Maury. Uh, you know, looking at your last slide there, all the people that are involved so far and we're just getting started, it's, it's phenomenal. I think the notion of a network um, is, has just been phenomenal and, and it's what's needed too for, for this kind of project. So uh, I get to introduce our state forester now, so which is my extreme pleasure. Laura McCarthy is New Mexico's first female state forester, a position that she's held since 2019. She oversees fire suppression and forest management efforts on 43 million acres throughout the state. 43 million acres throughout the state. How many other states could fit into that? I mean, Rhode Island, and anyway, we won't go on there, but a huge amount. Our little watershed is about 256,000 acres. So we're, um, Laura started her, started her career as a wildland firefighter and has a master of forestry degree from the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. And, and I'll say this, 
not being from Yale by any means. It's like the premier forestry school in the country. She has more than 25 years of experience in forestry related work, including the US Forest Service, the Forest Guild, and the Nature Conservancy. Thank you, Laura, for generously taking the time to speak with us today. We, we really appreciate it. Laura McCarthy. Hi, everyone. So I'm gonna try to show my slides and I feel like I need one more step. Okay, are you seeing slides? Yes. Great. Great. Well, um, I've never been asked to give a tree note address before. And I, when Maury phrased it that way, how could I say no? And I feel quite at home here with my tree people. Uh, and as well, I live in Santa Fe, actually right on the Santa Fe River myself. So uh, I'm personally invested in what you're doing and really excited about it. And what I'm gonna do in this talk is I'm gonna start with some planning things and our new state forest action plan. And then I'll go into one of the strategies which is urban and community forestry. And then I will go into some action items that are coming out of that plan and wrap up with an example of a climate ready tree initiative that has already taken place in Albuquerque. And I thought kind of hard, like, ah, do I really want to show an Albuquerque example to Santa Feans? Because I know there's kind of an Albuquerque Santa Fe dynamic. Um, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, and I hope that you find it interesting. So let's make sure I can advance. Not that way. Uh, let's try this. OK, so our New Mexico Forest Action Plan brand new was actually covered pretty well in the New Mexican a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago. And uh, what I'm gonna, uh, it, it's a required plan. For me, I was brand new in my job, but I came in with a really strong vision of what we needed this plan to do. And I wanted it to be a plan for all lands that involve forests and trees in the entire state as opposed to a guide for just our agency, the Energy, Minerals and Natural Resources Department Forestry Division, which is how it had been approached before. And my rationale is that I felt like the work that had taken place to date, while very good, still perpetuated a stovepiped approach. And my experience on the NGO side is that it takes a community. And I was wanting our, in the role of state forester, I wanted to provide the leadership to articulate a unifying vision that everybody could get together and, and work, work on in a networked setting, just like Maury's slides, which are outstanding. So here's how we approached our plan. First, we thought about the resources and assets that we value. And you can see at the bottom that urban forests and communities were one of the eight categories that we decided to focus on. And then we thought about, well, the hazards we worry about, the things that are going to undermine those resources and assets we value. And Today's talk is not gonna be about wildfire at all. You're probably all kind of sick of that anyway. Uh, and it's not gonna be about insects and disease uh, or development. It is gonna be around climate change. That's really gonna be my focus. And thinking about, you know, what's it gonna to take to have an urban forest in the year 2100? Because we know that a lot of changes are coming. And just even thinking about you know, one of the things I think about is, so there was a water release last weekend in the Santa Fe River and it got all the roots wet and it had been, what, five or six months since, since there was really flow in the river and then it got warm and the trees leafed out and like, when are they gonna get water again? 
well, we, we're lucked out right now, but um, I do have some concerns that we, that that the trees are they're under stress, and let's just hope that they have the adaptive mechanisms, and let's learn what we can so that we can um, help them adapt. So I'm going to take you through some data, and I can't entirely see what my slides say. That's kind of a problem. Um, well, I think this is tree canopy uh, statewide, and uh, I'm going to go through a series of statewide maps fairly quickly, uh, just to give you a sense of the type of data that went into our plan. So after we identified those resources, values at risk, and the hazards, then we went into a data gathering phase, and we had the Nature Conservancy as our contractor, and so that's what you're seeing here. So tree canopy, yeah, oh, this is not good to not be able to see. I just don't know if I can make that go away. Um, I think this is building envelopes and it looks really uh, like a small resolution, but actually, well, and this is our state. I mean, this is, we are not a dense state, but you can, if you zoom into it, you can, it actually goes down to the level of the house. And uh, this is another way that we got at tree canopy, but also we were looking for impervious surfaces. And that's important because uh, as was mentioned by Maury previously, um, water regulation is one of the things that trees in an urban setting can help with, and especially infiltration of rain and management of stormwater, which is maybe not a strength of the city of Santa Fe, but perhaps something that uh, could be worked on in the future. And then um, I can't read this one at all, and I don't remember what this one was, but you can read it. So I'll go on to the next one. Uh, and here's another, like this is all trees in the state canopy cover. And then this is where we're missing trees. And this is correlating urban density to tree canopy cover and making some assumptions about what we would like to see in terms of tree canopy in the future. And then this is where we have existing tree canopy. And then you put these two things together and this image just happens to be of Santa Fe. So the red is showing places that are high density housing, but low tree canopy. And the green is showing where the tree canopy is uh, relatively sufficient for the density of housing. So this could be a type of guide to where it might be good to work. And then this is just showing the two side by side. So on to strategy. After we finished our assessment with all data and we ended up with, I think, 80 data layers and we did some deep thinking about what kinds of strategies we need to have in a plan that's to guide our work collectively over 10 years. And we came up with 10 strategies. Uh, some of the other ones are things you would expect like forest restoration and fire management. And this urban and community forestry strategy was developed by Jennifer Dan, who at the time was our urban and community forestry specialist or program coordinator within our agency. And so she put this together. It's been reviewed now. The whole plan has been reviewed by the Forest Service at the Washington office level. And the feedback we got was that our urban and community forestry strategy is really among the best in the nation. And it was a complete brain dump by Jennifer because I think she knew at that point that she was going to be retiring, but she wanted to set us up with the best possible statewide strategy and uh, kind of leave her mark, if you will, by uh, providing that guidance of, of things that she had done that were successful and things that she still wanted to do. So within our urban and community forestry strategy, then we have two sub strategies and uh, they're written here. I'm gonna talk about strategy 7-1, one, 
which is increasing the resilient urban tree canopy. And I'll get into a little detail, but before I do that, uh, for anybody that's interested or likes to multitask, you could go, uh, you could use Google to find the 2020 NM Forest Action Plan, and you'll be able to open a PDF document and go to strategy seven and really see all the detail in there. And I think toward the end of my slides, I have the URL in there, but I thought maybe, uh, you know, some people are restless and I am anyway, uh, like to do a little multitasking and kind of dig in. So feel free to follow along with that. So I picked out three, I'm about to be signed out. Windows will shut down in one minute. That's crazy. I hope that doesn't happen. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, that might be some kind of IT thing that is happening. If that does happen, Maury, you have my slides and I'll log into the Zoom on my phone. Okay, sounds good. Okay, that's our plan if it happens. All right, so um, we have some, a lot of sub strategies in this plan. And so here's one that I thought would be particularly relevant. So the strategy is to uh, focus on the kinds of trees and shrubs that are gonna survive in the projected urban environment. And we know there are gonna be a lot of changes um, our outcome that we want is that even in 2100, we want to have an urban forest canopy. And in fact, we want a more robust urban forest canopy than we have today because of all those benefits, especially on the heating and cooling side and the water infiltration side. If the predict predictions of, uh, and I think this is borne out already, that the weather events are more extreme. And so if our water comes in more intense bursts, we want to be able to capture it uh, on natural lands. So uh, here are our measures then. This is how we're gonna hold ourselves accountable that by the year up, oh, it's restarting. So it's a good time for another tree joke. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Let's well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually tell a little, uh, a story that I, I thought I might tell. Um, I wasn't sure. So um, I actually, I didn't grow up in New Mexico. I grew up um, in an urban environment and uh, I am actually visiting my parents now who are in their mid eighties, first time that I've seen them in uh, a year and a half, everybody vaccinated. And uh, I was out with my dad and uh, just for a walk around the neighborhood. And he started showing me the trees that he uh, worked with the city to get planted in the neighborhood. And what was so cool was like how big these trees were and how much pride he had. So I guess I kind of grew up in, um, in a, in a uh, community tree of sorts. <laughs> So now my screen is sideways. That's also a problem. Am I sideways when I do this? Now you're right side up. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna let you advance. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, so what I wanted you to see here uh, to pick up, I, I assume you heard me talk about the outcome of an urban forest canopy that might even be expanded. And, uh, what I really wanted you to see was these measures and how we're gonna hold ourselves accountable. I'm a firm believer that if you have a plan, that's great, but what actually matters is the actions that follow. And the plan's supposed to be a guide, but don't measure us by the plan, measure us by what we do with the, the contents of the plan. And so every sub strategy has measures that and these plans are, we're required to update them every 10 years. So this is a, a 10 year action plan. All together, there are 192 action items. Uh, I didn't count how many are in strategy seven, the urban and community forestry strategy, but I would guess that there's more than 25. Jennifer was very thorough. So, Look at those measures though. Lists of recommended climate ready tree species for each primary urban growing zone of New Mexico. That's actually what I'm gonna focus on. And then in addition to that, having climate ready tree seedlings that are sold through the 
conservation seedling program, which is one of the programs we operate out of state forestry. And I can tell you, we already have five species that are off the Albuquerque climate ready tree list that are being grown in a nursery at the John T. Harrington Forestry Research Center. So we are walking the talk on this. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, lost my mouse here, go. Okay, so um, I'm trying to kind of show you a little snapshot of different types of strategies that we have. This one is really focused on planning and integrating urban forestry into city and state scale master plans and including in it green infrastructure and particularly the management of stormwater. Uh, and then we have our measures again, uh, which is the number of communities with tree care ordinances and the number of community master plans that include the urban forest as infrastructure. Now, you all probably know, uh, you know, Clearly, um, the Biden administration is doing something on in infrastructure. We don't really know if green in infrastructure is going to be a part of it, and if so, to what extent. But if it is, then I think that would be something to really jump on uh, the opportunity for federal funds to, to help make a difference and to um, spend some time with city of Santa Fe water managers, maybe you've already done this, to understand where the real problem areas are and to see if uh, green infrastructure can be part of the solution. I'm sure that's what you already do. Um, okay, next slide. I think it went, it didn't for me. There we go. Okay, so this is uh, uh, our uh, climate change one. Actually, I think you have to go back one. It somehow skipped. There should be two on this one. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Nope. Uh. There we go. Okay. So this is sub strategy seven one, which is really focused on climate change and. Uh, recognizing urban forests as part of a tool toolbox for landscape level environmental change and measuring by number of urban trees planted and percentage of relief projects with climate change focus where relief is one of the one of our state government authorities for uh, collecting funds and uh, operating a program. So then the next slide on this sub strategy I decided to show you what some of the actions look like and I didn't do a lot of this because I think this is a really boring slide with way too many words. But what I wanted you to see is that we have essentially for each, so we have a strategy and then we have a sub strategy and then we have outcomes and measures and then we have actions. And for each action, we have a what, a who, and a when. And then we put it all together into a giant table that has. 192 rows, one for each action item and a way for us to keep track of our progress. So I invite you all to, to learn about this action plan, to browse through the action items and see which actions appeal to you. Uh, this is very much uh, operating on the principle of the world is run by those who show up. And if you're gonna show up, you probably wanna work on what you wanna work on and that's absolutely fine. So uh, I hope I encourage you all to do that and then to tell us what you've done so that we can include your accomplishments as part of our statewide accomplishments. So let's, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit on the next slide and talk about this Climate Ready Trees uh, pilot project in Albuquerque. And in part, I'm talking about it because statewide is next. And uh, I already mentioned Jennifer Dan. She was followed by Erin Mayer. I don't know if you all got a chance to meet Erin or not. Um, she moved to New Mexico. She had great experience, uh, including working in urban forestry in both uh, Oakland, California, and New York City. 
and uh, but she moved here during the pandemic and it was just really isolating for her. And so she left after only five months, which is too bad, but uh, she did what she needed to do for herself. And I, I respect her for, you know, for knowing herself well enough to know that it was not a healthy situation. And so she was prepared and, and worked on the statewide part. We are currently now interviewing for that position actually starting tomorrow. So let's keep going and dive into climate ready trees. So this is just showing the current temperatures in Albuquerque and the projected temperatures in um, whatever the year is there, way out in the future. Okay, next slide. <laughs> Nothing you didn't already know. And uh, this is showing the publication that is out now. And that publication does go into details about climate ready trees for six different location types. And you can, and if you want to, if, if you're multitasking and you want to find it, um, you can go to nature.org slash, slash New Mexico trees and open up the climate ready trees document. Okay, next one. There were a lot of partners. State Forestry obviously was one of them. Um, you probably know a uh, number of the people on this and we'll go to the next. And the, the process was actually very science-based. So it started with understanding the climate trends and then uh, identifying a set of promising tree species kind of based on intuitions and, and prof professional knowledge. And then developing a set of scoring criteria based on those, uh, those climate trends and the characteristics of trees. And then once the criteria existed, then they, uh, they ranked each species that they considered and made a long list of climate ready tree species. And then they divided them out into recommended species by different planting location types, which ranged from, you know, bosque type environment to, uh, to like parking lot type environment. And so we'll go on. Oh. And so what they found for the Albuquerque metro area was that in this in this 80 year time period that the climate envelope in Albuquerque is going to be like Tucson today. And so part of what they did is looked at well what's growing well in Tucson now and those types of trees were then ranked pretty highly in terms of the scoring criteria and you can go to the next one. So here are, this is a list of the criteria scoring and the, and the bonus columns. Um, I, I like the edible parts, um, especially given that food security is also really important. And uh, I also happen to like attractiveness and supports wildlife. And I think most people do, but then some of the other more practical things in terms of tree survival are the urban compaction tolerance because that is a real factor or uh, the flooding tolerance as we have uh, more extreme weather events and keep going. I'm not, I'm, I'm seeing some chat pop up but I can't quite read it. Um, I think it was what is the um, what is the link again to the climate ready trees? And it was nature.org slash New Mexico climate ready trees. I think that's what it was. And it's, it's definitely that. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to, I want to linger here for a minute because I, I don't know. I, I like looking at this list, even though it's a, it is a lot of words on a slide. But I think that, um, yeah, so is water a criteria? I'm sure it is. It has to be because that's the climate envelope. That list I showed you was the bonus points, but ability to handle the, the water 
the you know the decrease in precipitation that we expect and the variability is is a yes. And when you look at this list, I think that's a lot of what you you see is some really drought tolerant trees. Um, I like that it's separated by native trees and then other trees that could do well, like ornamental trees. You know there is there is a role for that, and. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we have already five of these being grown in a nursery, and I think they're all the oaks. I think there are five oaks on there. And so all five are being grown in a nursery setting. And they will be, I think the first one of the five will be ready in 2022 for planting fall of 22. And then the others will be ready in, in spring of 2023. And so you can keep going. Um, yeah, a little bit about how to use this report. And uh, again, it's our intention to have this for the entire state, for the urban areas throughout the state. And I think there might be one more slide. Oh, a couple more slides. Okay, some next steps. So we expand the list. Uh, we have to work with nurseries and growers to make sure that that these species are available and we need to continue learning. And that means providing feedback as, as, uh, as, trees, as these trees are planted and we see how they actually do, then we need to keep refining this list and improving it based on our real life experience. And let's go to the next one. Okay, yeah, so this is my last slide. I just thought I'd end with a little pitch for our forestry division and jobs. And plus, I love this photo. And uh, the, the, you know, we're a, we're a small organization and in, in the prior administration, uh, our focus was entirely on wildfire. And since I've been there, and under the leadership of Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, it's all about climate change and making sure that we have forests and urban forests in 2100. And um, we're always expanding and looking for staff to join us. So with that, I think there are some questions in the chat and I'm not sure, I might be able to manipulate things so that I can read the chat, let me see. Yeah. I'm also happy to read read any, or folks can feel free to unmute themselves and ask Laura directly. Okay, so iPhone, explain a little bit more what you mean. The real issue is where the water is being diverted. Explain more what you mean, please. Or maybe that maybe people can't unmute. I think folks should be able to unmute. Because I'm not sure I understand the question enough to answer it. I mean, real issue as in, there are lots of underlying issues, but I think there was something in particular you were wanting to get at. Maybe. Well, maybe, oh. Okay. Go for it, George. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm new, but anyway, basically climate ready means that if they, once these trees that we're planting get established, if we don't water them, they'll most likely survive because on whatever rainfall comes, is that correct? That's the idea. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm totally behind that. That's great. I All this talk about you know, planning, and I'm thinking, well, gosh, where's all the water going to come from? But you need a little water to get them going, but once, yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. then I guess you have something like, who's that, that guy that was, oh, um, that guy in England in the 20s, oh, Richard Baker, Baker something. He wrote a book called My Life, My Trees, and he claimed to, 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 um, uh, to reverse part of the desertification in the Sahara by planting these 
really strong trees that would take root and then make a microclimate. And then you progressively plant more delicate trees like fruit trees and so forth. And it was claimed that he was res um, responsible for thousands and thousands of acres of reclaimed, re reclaimed land. That's wonderful. <laughs> So thank you for having me. It was really an honor to give a, a tree note address. Thank you so much again, Laura. Uh, we really, really appreciate or appreciate <laughs> you, you joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to, I think Raquel is going to announce, uh, is that right? Okay, Raquel, I'm gonna turn it over to Raquel to announce the raffle winners. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. It's good to see all of you here. I'm Raquel Baca Thompson. I'm the Administrative Director with the Santa Fe Watershed Association. Uh, I'll be with the association for 15 years coming up on May 6th. So been around for a while. Um, anyway, what we've done is we've collected all the names. I don't know if you can see that. Um, of people who participated in the planting and also bought raffle tickets. And the way we're going to announce the winner is use a um, number generator. Every person that's listed here has a number. And I'm just gonna use a number generator from the internet and announce. We're gonna give away two trees, right, Andy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first person is number 21 and that is Kevin Myers. I don't know if Kevin Myers is here right now. I don't think so. But what we'll do is we'll give him a call. We have his phone number. So congratulations to Kevin. And oh, he's I'm a friend of mine. <laughs> oh, good. Great. Good to hear. Yeah. Um, good. Clean up the Arroyo together. <laughs> yes, I know that. He's a, he's a volunteer and a big supporter of um, the Watershed Association. Yeah. And all right, let's do our next person. And that is number eight. And number eight is Donna Francis Kusewit. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the last name correctly. But congratulations, Donna. And we'll give her a call. And um, give away the tree as well as installation and with, is it with Athena or do we know, is that gonna be with Athena? I think it most likely will be from our most distinguished local urban forester, Athena Bashur, who is here with us um, with Seeds of Wisdom. Um, so I'm sure that we'll be working with Athena to do the consultations and the tree installation. So exciting for Kevin and Donna to get to work with Athena. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm in. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, Andy, Steve, any last words? And we'll, we'll let you all get on with your evenings. <laughs> so I just get to say again, thank you all for being here. And, you know, a big shout out to Maury Hensley for putting all this together and this is fun. This is the start of a program. Oh my God, check in about six months from now. You're gonna really see some stuff going on. It's fun. Thanks again, everybody and take good care.